So welcome everyone for this uh, first event on Rolling Languages server. It will be about solo role-playing games. Uh, Eris was there, uh, asked me a question about this, and we thought, well, we should do actually a, an event with more people than only us talking in private. So I hope we will um, talk about well things that will be interested for you if you want to start role-playing games in solo, if you've never played it. Or just, you know, learn new things, new ways to play role-playing games. So I'm Mori, I speak English, not fluent, but I do my best. I also speak French since I'm, since I'm French. And I happen to be an admin on Rolling Languages. It's uh, not uh, so long ago, but uh, I'm really glad to be part of the team now. So if anyone wants to introduce themselves, feel free. Arsene, maybe? We start at the top of the, the list. Yes, yes, stand by the best. <laughs> Hello, I am Asen Inc. Um, English is my second slash third language. And I am somewhat fluent, but my main is still French because uh, that's where I'm born. And I and if the educational system of French worked, I would also be speaking German, but it doesn't, so I don't. And, and you, uh, you also create solo RPGs. I also create. I created. Um, I wrote some her, some uh, tabletop RPGs, including one solo RPG. We're going to talk about this later. Maybe at the end of the. Different questions we're going to try to answer. Eris, if you want to introduce yourself. Hello, it's Eris here. Uh, my languages are Basque and Spanish, and I also talk English. So those three I are my my languages. And well, I asked Mori about the topic because of a personal interest, but I don't know. I don't want to talk about uh, about personal issues. I'm going to talk about um, why, what, on perhaps how, based on my limited experience. Thank you. Jess, if you want to introduce yourself since you're here. Sure. Um, I'm Jess. I'm an admin of Rolling Languages. I speak Galician and Spanish and more or less English. Um, well, uh, my experience with solo games is not a lot. I just play one adventure and I didn't end it. <laughs> so, but I'm interested in this talk and I would like to know more about it, how to manage the, the decisions when the luck is involved. So I hope this talk is interesting for everyone. And you are the founder, one of the founder of Rolling Languages, by the way. So without you, we wouldn't yeah. be able to do this tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Zupe, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, sure, I'm Zupe. Um, my mother language is uh, Spanish, and I speak a bit of uh, English, uh, German, Galician, and French, but uh, very, very little. Uh, I'm trying to learn a bit more <laughs> with you, in fact. Uh, and I don't write role-play games. I just play them, or uh, sometimes I there to direct them. And I have just a limited experience playing solo games, but uh, the times that I've tried, I, I had uh, quite fun. So today I want to learn more about uh, your games and your recommendations, and well, a little bit of.
Well, thank you. So you already uh, answered a bit to the first question I was going to ask you. So it's, what is your experience with role-playing games? So, uh, Alsen said yet yeah, that you created uh, games, but do you play often solo RPGs? What do you use maybe? What tools? What games? Uh, honestly, I spent more time working on my solo game than playing solo games. But yeah, I still play sometimes. Especially uh, when I'm bored on train travels or at work. And really, there are some, I've just found some solo RPGs that I really want to try. So, I think next year will be a solo RPG year. Do you have one game that you really like that you can uh, share with us? Um, I really enjoy the speech, the pitch from Colossal. Oh yeah, this one with the pretty uh, cover. Whoa, when preparing wow. this event, I saw it again, and uh, I really want to try this one. It looks pretty cool. And you're not right in the thread the, the names of the. Of oh, the game. Yes, I will. I will. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that one. You want so... me to give you a tweet pitch about what it's about? We can do it maybe a bit later maybe. because we're going to drop a, a lot of the resources later. And it's one of the games I listed in my uh, in my presentation. So we'll come to that. So Eris, what is your experience? You already talked about it, but uh, you tried solo RPG with what games actually? Yeah, I tried mainly uh, playing with my own systems, but. I'm still at it because, uh, as I said, it's quite quite tricky. But I'm still interested to to learn um, uh, about this. Okay. Well, Zupi, did you already play enough solo RPG to mention one game or one system, maybe? Uh, I've only played uh, two games. I have uh, another ones in my list ready to, to start playing them, but uh, I didn't have the chance yet. But uh, I've played one uh, uh, that is uh, it's called, well, it's in fact uh, one adventure. I think there are more. Uh, it's called Alone in the Flames, which is a Call of Cthulhu uh, introductory game. In fact, it's uh, sort of tutorial because it starts introducing you to the way you create a, a character uh, in the Call of Tulu uh, system. So and, and it's more or less like one of these build your own adventure games that you start uh, doing something and then based on the on what the die tell you you go to one paragraph or to another. This is the this was the first one that I tried. And then uh, there is another one, uh, sort of, um, well, it's published by a, a Spanish uh, uh, company, a small company, uh, that is called Mapeando las Catacumbas, uh, that would be mapping the dungeons. And uh, it's based on lists of events, and you start drawing your own dungeon based on the, on what you get uh, on the dice and it's it's quite fun i mean you end up with a with a map sometimes in several uh, floors of uh, your own dungeon uh, and you can spend one one afternoon a quiet afternoon playing that and without uh, noticing it thank you so you mentioned uh, Alone in the Flames, which is one of the way to use solo RPGs, actually. Maybe we're going to talk about it a bit later, but you can use solo game to, you know, introduce uh, mechanics for non-solo RPGs, actually. You can try it. If, you, if you're going to be the GM, maybe you can try the first uh, adventure that is solo, then you can 
uh, learn the the mechanics while playing solo and then later you would be able to play like Cthulhu maybe or a different game it's something yeah. that you can find exactly. often now uh, with more uh, recent games with the first solo adventure to discover the mechanics when you're going to be the GM and then it helps you learn I think it's a good thing to do that but it's not just like that of course uh, yes if you want to share something with your little experience about solo RPGs maybe a game that you would like to try if you've never played um it's not uh just a game but more like how to to do it because I uh, I think that uh you'll uh don't have the same the same uh level of immersion as with uh group uh games it's more like writing and sometimes the um, the fact that you have to do everything yourself can be quite overwhelming so it's it's just more not a game but uh getting the the world feeling of it i don't know okay so i didn't talk about my experience about solar rpg so i'm going to do it now uh so i discovered solo rpg with a game that is quite uh, famous now popular it's iron sworn uh, it's a game that you can play solo but also multiplayer with or without a gm and uh, i discovered it like four years ago and it it's actually actually free so you can find it online and it was the first game that i tried solo but it was maybe a bit bigger big to me so i tried uh, other small game and i really enjoyed playing solo because i like to write uh, the adventures that I create when I play solo. So not everyone likes to write, but um, it's something I really like. And I, you, you know, you can also draw little drawings while, while you are uh, uh, telling your story. So yeah, there's different way to play, but it's something that I really enjoyed. And then later I'll, I found the JDR Solitaire, which is another server. It's a French uh, speaking community dedicated to solo RPGs. So if you have any questions about solo role playing, it's probably the best uh, way to find information if you are French speaking, because there's a lot of people who really enjoy solo RPGs and they know a lot of things. So whenever there's a question, you can find the answer there. And so, yeah, I'm an admin also on the on this community since, uh, I don't know, maybe a year. Or, I don't remember. And you could also use a translator, by the way. Yeah, actually, we share um, resources in English, but also mm -hmm. so. Uh, but yeah, this is my experience. I played a lot of Iron Sworn uh, campaign. Uh, actually, I have three campaigns: solo campaign that I uh, I started with three different characters because I wanted to explore different things in the universe of Iron Sworn. There's not actually uh, an, a universe in this game because you will going to create it as you play. And this is what I really like in solo RPG. It's creating your own universe using you know random tables and you, you roll a few dice and it gives you some prompts and then you can imagine uh, what the universe around you is and what the, the adventure is going to be. So you, you never know, actually. It's a, it's a surprise. This is what I really like in solo RPG. And actually, I haven't been playing since, uh, yeah, lately because, you know, you have different things to do. But uh, I really want to try again, uh, continue my campaign in Iron Swan. And sometimes I play very small solo RPGs, like one-page games. This is something you can try and play one shot and it's done. You don't have to play again, but, you know, just to try a different system. Any recs for one-page solo RPGs? Well, I'm, I can, I'm going to share a lot of games. So, 
there are actually very small gains. This is my se my next question. About what you said uh, on the ways of playing, that's uh, true because I felt uh, I would have to write what not at all. I discovered a Spanish uh, solo community on Telegram called Jugando Solo RPG. Mm -hmm. And uh, these people, some uh, just uh, record uh, the, the stories with audio. I was uh, trying to, to find my, my own way of, of playing the other day because these people want to do a, a sort of jump of solo role playing just to, to show this exists. And my way, it seems, they are uh, versus. Not just writing, because that's a lot. Not either audio, because mm, talking to oneself can be quite um, uh, strange, let's say. And that's my way of playing. I still have a lot to, to explore. I'll tell you. Yeah, there was actually different way to play solo and maybe we can try uh, to really say what is solo role-playing game because maybe people don't know actually what it is and first of all it's not a gm and a player because sometimes you can hear a solo scenario is a scenario for one player but there's still the game master who's running the game that's not it's not the same thing as solo role-playing game. When you play solo, you are really alone. Um, but it's not that different than a multiplayer session, because sometimes you have to create your own character. You have your character sheet, you have dice, you have cards, uh, you have uh, paper where you can write information that's needed. You have the rules, etc. So it's... It's a different way to play, but um, it's still interesting because, like we said with Zupe, you can uh, actually play solo if you want to learn mechanics. And if you, you're preparing a game session, maybe you can play solo and it can give you inspirations or ideas you can then reuse for your next sessions. That's actually what I did with Iron Sworn because, as I said, the mechanics can uh, you can play solo or multiplayer, and uh, I used what I created with my on my own solo campaign, and I used this for uh, games that I run in the convention online on Discord, and this was my first uh, session running Iron Sworn with other players, people that I didn't know, but since I already played it solo a lot, and I already had these characters in my mind and places that I created, I I knew the the places, I knew the characters, etc. So it really helped me um, improvise things during the game session, because actually it's one of the way to play solo, it's improvising completely. But you don't improvise like without any resources, you actually you use random tables or only your inspiration, but most of the time you have prompts. Um, you can roll dice and you have random tables, or you can draw a card from a standard deck of cards or a tarot uh, deck, and this will give you inspiration for your session or for what's going to happen next. Mori, have you yeah. ever tried to play an existing module like a, a reading adventure of DD, for example? Well, this is the second way to play solo actually because we, i we... was yeah go on go ahead that uh you could uh, easily spoil yourself if playing uh an already written rpg because you just uh read the plot yeah so this is 
actually the problem if we can say that it's a problem but whenever you read the universe for a game for a role-playing game actually when even when you're a player you already know what is this creature what what this creature is what this character is because you already read all the books if you're really fond of I don't know, if you really like D&D and you played all the books, well, you, you never have the surprise, you know, to discover things. You can understand that this creature is uh, this type of, you know, monster in the, the manual, etc. So it's a, it can be a problem, but I think it's not really a problem because even when you, when you play, when you improvise your adventure, you, it's meta, you actually know uh, what's going to happen maybe sometimes if you want to if you choose to explore this dungeon there uh, you already know that if you really want to I don't know if you want to meet uh, werewolves I don't know if you want to explore this part of the universe you say okay I'm going to play and there's going to be a dungeon there's going to be werewolves because I want to I don't know tell a story with werewolves in it and there will be maybe uh, an artifact I want to find it so it's there's surprise when you improvise things, but you also mm. play with what you want to put in your story. Um, but it's still enjoyable. It's still uh, fun to do that because there's random. It's random uh, when you roll the the, the dice. Uh, there's also the mechanics involved, so you never know what's going to happen. If you fail a roll, you I, you don't know if you're going to die or survive. Mm. You know, so it's, you can. You can play uh, with existing games. It's not something that I do. I usually use games that are, you know, with that they contain everything you need to play. So there's random tables, there are uh, maybe ideas with characters. Like Aaron's World, there's everything you need to play in it. The mechanics, the the oracles, that's what how you call these random tables. But you can actually play uh, D and D solo if you want to. So this is the two main different way to play solo. Actually, you use solo games that are um, that are made to play solo, or you use a non-solo game like D and D, Cthulhu, whatever you want, and you add tools to play this game. So you you can use the scenarios, but uh, actually, you don't have to, because the tools you will you're going to use. Well, it's it's really like uh, what you can find already in a lot of games. Actually, like random tables. There's this in some of the non-solo role-playing games. Uh, if anyone is listening and has no idea, uh, those tools are uh, as far as I know are ways of emulating the the AGM because uh, you roll and the dice tell you what your GM would uh, tell. Like you see an enemy ahead or you don't success or whatever. So the, these tools like oracles and tables are the your own particular game because you're playing by by yourself. There are tables like uh, places, uh, characters, enemies, and oracles which are. Um, well, they tell if you succeeded or not, but not in a yes, no way, but as a yes and yes, but no and so um, those those kind of things. I don't know yeah. if it's clear, but there there are both. You actually have. Yeah, it's what you call a GM simulator, actually, Game Master simulator or emulator. Um, it's a tool, like it's a random table or mechanics that will answer any question you have 
related to what's what's happening around you. If you are a character in an adventure and you don't know where you are or you don't know who's in front of you, do you meet someone? Is there a monster somewhere? And there's the basic uh, oracle, which is a yes, no question. Like, uh, I don't know, is there a river nearby? You roll the dice or, or a die or you draw a card or anything. And it will answer the question like, if you ask a GM, it will be the same. You can ask, is there a, a river there? It's the same thing. And then you have, as you said, the random tables that will help you. Um, how can I say that? You know, uh, put some, add some um, places, enemies, or people around you, and it will help you. Yeah, you know, it's it's like a generator. It's a random generator if you want to have a skirmish generator or a, a place generator, even name generator. If you want to create a character on the fly, you can. You have uh, plenty of information you can add, like uh, is it old, is he uh, young, etc. So actually, it's a way to keep the, the surprise because, as you said, you don't know. If you don't want to know everything by reading the scenario before that before you play, you can use random tables to do that for you. This is how you keep the the surprise. And since we're, we're talking about these tools, well, I I shared some of them that you can check. So the first one, it's a very simple one. It's the one page solo engine. Uh, yeah, it's uh, actually two pages, I think. Uh, but it's very simple. It uses a um, standard deck of cards and it will answer your questions about yeah, yes, no questions or open and questions like uh, the what's happening in the scene. Is it a combat scene? Is it an exploration scene? Uh, you can even uh, generate a dungeon with this. Maybe not the most uh, useful tool to do this, but uh, it contains everything you need, and it's like it's very light engine that you can add to any game actually. Like let's say you want to play D and D, you you have the mechanics for D and D, you have your dice to roll, roll the dice whenever you need to use the mechanics, and if you don't want to follow the scenario, well, you use this engine, and it will generate a story for you simply using a standard deck of cards or dice if you don't have one one of the most famous other tool like that is the mythic game master emulator uh, i heard like good uh, and bad things about this one so i don't know you can read it and check if you if it's the best tool for you, I'm not a, I'm not playing D and D a lot at all. Maybe so. I don't know what I can tell you about this one, but so yeah, you can see there's generic tools you can use with any game, and then you have specific tools like people who create um, add-ons to uh, another game. Like there's this one, a solo dungeon world. If you if you want to play dungeon world, but alone, you can. Use this one. So yeah, you just have to check. And I think there's a lot of these tools that exist. But if you're not into solo RPG, maybe you don't know it. There's plenty of um, emulator like this you can use. You just have to find the one that you really like. Maybe the one page solo engine to begin with is very light. So these ones are tools that you use with uh, actual role-playing games that are not uh, designed to be played solo, but of course you have solo games. Solo game that you play, uh, you don't have to add uh, other tools. It contains everything you need to play. And if you really want to start and you're, um, uh, and it's the first time you play solo, you can play five minute games. You actually play five minutes. So it's called five minute E, I guess it's five minute edition. And these games, it's very simple. It has uh, a few random tables. You use 1d6, you roll a few times, and 
um, at the end you have five minutes to write one scene. So write or maybe just imagine it if you don't want to write it. So it's it's kind of like um, an imagination uh, exercise or writing exercise if you want to write it. I think it it depends uh, as we uh, discussed earlier about how do you do you play. It's uh, just uh, finding your style of of recording the the game. Whoa, yeah. that's a lot. Oh, I actually tried Quill before uh, discovering traditional uh, tabletop games. It's fine. It's um, I like it. But I discovered group games, and that was uh, a game changer for me. There is something there that I think that it's quite uh, to be noticed about these journaling games that uh, there are some solo games based on that, on creating a journal, uh, and you, a journal that you can continue as a campaign. And uh, I didn't know this uh, some months ago, and when I discovered that, it was like, wow, yeah, it's, it's like an obvious idea. Why didn't I think about it earlier? Yeah, it's one way to play solo. It's not all journaling games. You can record yourself like with an audio also, you can use a microphone, you can imagine in your head, but I think it's important to keep notes when you play an adventure that is uh, maybe a campaign. If you want to play more sessions, you need to keep some information, you know, whenever you create another character or an NPC and then a different place, each time you, you have more info. So it's still important to keep some information. But you don't, you don't have to. If you want to play one shot, you can. Just and yes, we, get in, get about in Quill, so to notes. explain a bit about Quill, it's a game uh, where you write a letter, actually. So it's very specific. It's um, There's a, another version of this game, which is uh, kind of like Cthulhu uh, Lovecraft uh, style. And you actually write a letter, but you are like a character from a, a Lovecraft story. So it's more dark and maybe horror style. But yeah, journal, journaling games are probably one of the, the best way to, to play solo to start because you actually write your story. You don't have to write it uh, uh, from your from your character point of view, you can imagine it's a, it's a third person story. So anyone tried um, five minute game before? Did you know it exists? No. And mm. um, I'm curious about I didn't. it. When I say people, hey, do you know you can play a role playing game in five minutes? They don't believe me. But it actually exists, and there are a lot of different um, setting, if we, if we can say that, for a five-minute game. And you you can listen to a song while doing this, a five-minute song. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's like an exercise you can play like in your at a, a cafe or uh, you're waiting for the bus or the train. It's really fun. Well, if you, if you have a die in your pocket, maybe. Um, so if you have questions, feel free to, or I'm going to continue and present more games. This is pretty, pretty cool. I have to, to try this. So I'm going to talk about Alone Among the Stars, which is a game that I um, always um, mention when someone says, hey, what game should I try first? to play solo, because this one is pretty cool. It's very simple. It's like three pages long. And it's um, it's a game in, wh in which you are playing an explorer in space, and you discover new planets, and what you discover on these planets. And you can write your, um, yeah, it's, it's a journaling game also. And you use a simple a very simple system. It's uh, you have one six-sided die, 
and a standard deck of cards. And whenever you want to discover a new planet, well, you roll the die, you draw the same number of cards in front of you, and you discover everything with the cards, like uh, what kind of discovery discovery it is. Like, is it a creature? Is it a, a weird phenomenon on the planet? Is it a, a new place or anything like that? And it will tell you uh, where did you find it? Like, is it in a desert, on a volcano, or at the top of a mountain? And it's just that. It's, you find this, you find it there, and you have to write a few sentences about what your character feels when you discover this new thing. And then you can play whenever you want. Like, if you want to draw one card each day, you, you can. Whenever you're tired and you don't want to play anymore, you just tell the, the game is over. There's no character creation, so it's very simple. You're just a space explorer, that's it. And it's very, uh, it's one of these games, you know, that maybe we can call it a care game, like the games that are very um, uh, dreamlike, maybe, or. Uh, there's no violence in it. You can actually, you can write whatever you want, but um, I think it's a very poetic, maybe, game. You can, you can imagine it's a very quiet and, uh, and cozy situation. Even if you're a lonely explorer in space, that can be pretty, <laughs> pretty sad, but um, it's not the idea for this game, I think. And actually, we played this one alone among the stars. We played it uh, on play by post on the JDR Solitaire community, and it's I think it's a good way to play um, textual RPG. Also, journaling is it's a good way to do this with more people. It's even if there is one character, you can actually play with more people than one player. You can imagine everyone plays the same character, actually, since you don't know what the character looks like. I... Um, uh, well, it's not recently. In fact, it's, it was uh, several months ago. You know, this game is about just in your own adventure. These books. Yeah, the, in, in Spanish it's called Libro Juegos. It's like yeah. choose, choose Les your livres own. dont vous êtes le héros en français. Les livres dont vous êtes yeah. le héros. Ga okay. Game books, okay. Uh, well, uh, I discovered there are some which they aren't like you go to that page. No, you actually have that and you have to create your character with your sheet and abilities and, and the like. Yeah, we're already having this conversation about are game books actually solo RPGs or not? <laughs> it's kind of like um, the topic that we can see a lot, but actually they are pretty close to role-playing games because the mechanics in some yeah, of them it, are really role-playing games. Uh, uh, for a halfway point between playing in group and playing solo, I think. Because it's a good start if you want to try solo RPG. You can actually use one of the fighting fantasy game books that are the, the most famous and maybe not the best, but um, you know, you have your character sheet in these games. You have to check your abilities and stuff sometimes. Even sometimes you have random tables, like random encounters in the when you're exploring the dungeon. I remember there's this one in the uh, Firetop Mountain, the first one of the fighting fantasy. So yeah, it's um, it's very close to solo RPG, but the, the main difference is that you're following a really scripted uh, story. So this is why it's always complicated to decide whether or not these game books are solo RPG, because you're really you're, you're following the story that is already written, even if there's, there are plenty of you know different direction you can follow, but still but yeah, it's, it's a good way to start also, if you really want to read a lot. Mm -hmm. and about scripted RPGs, 
I shared a drift, which is à la dérive in French. There's also there had a, there's a translation for this one also. And we're still in space because uh, it's a game of um, well, a drift, a game of space solitude. This is the 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 title of the game. So in this one, you're also you're a uh, you're an astronaut that is uh, lost in space, and you can see maybe Earth or your spaceship nearby, but you are not able to to go to it, and you're just floating in space and this is the your last moment of your life, so it's a bit dark. It's like a introspection game, but it's more scripted. So, if you want to try a, a solo RPG that is more scripted and that is more restricted, uh, so that you are uh, you don't have to imagine everything, you can try this one uh, because you're kind of following. It's not exactly a scenario, but you have questions. And every time there's a question, you have to roll dice. I think it's the, it's kind of like the PBTA system, powered by the apocalypse system. If you know this one, actually, Iron Swan is also a game that is inspired by uh, PBTA. So yeah, Adrift is a, a game that you can play like 40, 45 minutes, and it's a good start. Also, if you want to. You know, just follow the questions, answer the question, roll the, the dice, and it will tell you what, what what's going to happen. You, you, lo you lose your oxygen, so it's uh, stressful, and there are uh, random events that happen. It's a one-shot game. I don't think you, you can actually play it more than one time, but uh, I played it only once because it's, uh, it's kind of like following the scenario in a way. You're just an astronaut in space and you eventually die, so <laughs> it's a bit sad, but um, it's a bit dark, but it's still a good way to play a more scripted game. If you don't want to, you know, imagine with only one prompt and let's go. If you have more questions about solo role-playing game, we can, like, how do you actually play a, a session? Yeah, that's is, uh, another important question. Most of the time, this is uh, this is what people think. It's not exactly what is written in the book. Like, if you skip all the explanation on how you actually play solo, because you can have mechanics, sure, but if you don't know how to use it, uh, you're not going to do a lot of things. So, uh, well, it depends a lot on the games, for sure, but. Uh, usually, you have if you have a, a really um, basic game like um, any role playing game, you have your character sheet. So you imagine what is your character, what's his name, what's their name, what uh, what they look like. If there's a, a specific universe, maybe you are a human, maybe you are a, I don't know an animal sometimes, or an alien, or from a different um, country or whatever. And then you have um, tools to create maybe the the beginning of the story, and most of the time it's enough. You know, you have your character, and you start playing right in the in the middle of the action. Because this is how you, you know, you can roll the dice already on or draw a card, etc. So this is a way to to start with. Um, the plot, the plot is is starting at this moment. If you spend too many times, you know, uh, deciding, hey, what's going to happen? What if I do this? What if I do that? And then later I will add this character, etc. It's not, it's not uh, a good way because you're going to spend a lot of time just thinking, but not playing actually. So you know, you can just start in the middle of the action, like you roll a die and you pick a prompt, like. Uh, I don't know, there's an explosion some, uh, suddenly nearby, or um, there's an attack, or the village uh, suddenly uh, there are people missing in the village, or I don't know. And you just start playing. So like uh, for Iron Sworn, this is how you play actually. The mechanics help you generate the story. So you create well, your character and you, you just start to play, and it's, it's enough actually. 
how do you manage uh, dialogues? I mean, when you role play solo, you say like, I am going to this uh, village and talk to this person. And then he says, and you pick out or, or, or what? I do the dialogues myself. <laughs> I play all the characters, even out loud. I mean, I can speak with my character and the other character responds and answer the questions I can ask. So you can do this out loud. You can do this in your mind. You can write. So that's why I think it's a good way. Writing it helps you ask questions and you can write dialogues. I do that sometimes when the dialogues are important. Uh, How is how do you play? I am asking you because you are the the most experienced uh, person here. I don't know do if I am. But... Talk aloud or write or write everything or just take notes, like a uh, wallet journal. I do all of this. Uh, it depends on the game, but like it's a if it's a journaling game, you just write. It's it's enough because you don't have to talk. To yourself you just write since it is uh, the object that you're creating you're creating a journal actually so at the end of your session you can have a beautiful uh, notebook with uh, you know even drawings if you want to add stuff in it and it depends on the game but um, just I mean if you're playing a D&D &D game solo well why wouldn't you play also the NPCs I mean, it, it's fun just to play characters, so you can do it by yourself. Why not? I mean, if you are intimidating to do this uh, on your own, well, you can turn on the camera and record it, and then you can post it on YouTube or Twitch. And actually, people do it. Um, there are streams of solo games you can find online. There are channels uh, that do that. You can actually interact with the community if it's on Twitch because it's live. So you play solo, so you tell the story, like, uh, okay, the story um, I said there, and uh, I'm my character is blah, blah, blah. And now what's going to happen? Well, let's, maybe the chat can decide, you know? I might do that just uh, did the, the other day. You, you heard me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's solo game, but it's, uh, strangely, it's very a good way to play with other people that will decide what's going to happen. This is a fun way to play. So you tell a story, like, it's like you're the narrator, but um, maybe the, the viewers can decide, you know, they can vote on different options, for example. But yeah, usually you just talk to yourself. So don't, don't be afraid to do that. You're not crazy. Um, you can record, you know, audio, you can talk, you can write, you can draw. I know people only draw when they play. So it's also nice to do that if you like to draw things. And for Aaron Swan, for example, you also have the, the map of the region, the universe where you play, there's a, um, what you call the iron lens so this is the the setting for your for your story you have a blank map with uh, different regions there are there's a description for each region in the book but it's very simple you know you have the mountains in the north you have the uh, the islands you have a deep forest etc and then it's a it's a blank map so you add the villages the places you visit, the places you want to visit. Let's say you have an information about, I don't know, um, an old temple somewhere in the north. You don't know where it is, but you can, you know, add a cross on your map. And it helps you uh, imagine your travels also. This is something I really like, you know, just creating a map. You put a dot on your, on your map and you add the name of the, the village. And you add more villages and places uh, as you travel. So this is a, th a thing that is, um, I already said this, but it's uh, something that I really enjoy to do in solo RPG.
that you don't have to do this. Of course, you can play one-shot RPGs, like uh, the one we mentioned. Like, Alone Among the Stars can be a one-shot every day, or it doesn't have to, you know, follow the same story every time. If you have questions about how to play, maybe again, then we're going to I'm going to share some websites and other online resources you could use to play solo. We could also uh, do the, uh, a game here, or I don't know. I'm just brainstorming ideas. You know, like someone playing, um, you may want to enter and, and listen. I just uh thinking out loud because okay that would be an, uh, a way of of playing I mean uh, here like if someone wanted uh, other people go, would uh, want to game joining perhaps it would even be helpful if playing in in another language your target language i don't know in french uh let's say just uh without <laughs> the the pressure of um creating mi misunderstandings with with the, the table because mm, you say a word that you think means something but it actually does not. I don't know. I'm just yeah, you try uh, so thinking a lot. Yeah, it's a good way to try and play in a different language. Actually, while we're playing an Iron Swarm uh, solo multiplayer, if we can say that, on the Julia Solitaire server, we had a person from Australia, I think. So he wanted to actually practice uh, his French by playing with us. So it's a play by post game. So this it's a good way to learn a different language actually. So we're cheating a bit because it's uh, it's not supposed to be solo since we're uh, many players doing this. Uh, but we had the same character. So same character but different uh, several players. So each player uh, writes a um, you know, a couple of messages. They play solo, and then they write the 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 session on the same channel. Per character, uh, they are going to go mad because uh, one minute they are doing something, and the next they are doing the opposite because of the player. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting to play a solo game with the same character but with more people because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's that's for sure, but that always happens. I mean when when playing you don't even know what uh other players are are going to do. Yeah, actually when you play solo you don't even know what you're going to do because uh, you can have an idea at the beginning but uh, as you play you can think hey I have another good idea I'm going to do this instead or okay this combat didn't went well I almost died so I'm not going to explore the dungeon instead I'm going to you know rest in the this little village and you know meet some people so you never know what's going to happen if you're not using a scenario, of course, because if you're doing this, it's more restricted way of playing. There's, it's, it's very different. There's different way to play solo. It's just like role playing games. There are a lot of mechanics, a lot of universe, a lot of different way to do it. So, yeah, you just have to find the game that is for you. Or at least the tool that you can use, because you can use the game that you like, that is not a solo game, and then add some tools. About this, actually, I'm going to talk about tools that you can find online, because you can do that. Um, 
there is this great website that is Chartopia that you might know maybe. Maury, has, yep. so I just asked uh, if you consider playing through post solo RPGs. Perhaps, uh, Sope, are yeah. you there? Uh, yeah, because uh, I was uh, hearing Mori uh, talking about her experience uh, with this uh, Iron Sworn campaign uh, managing the same character through different people. Uh, and I was that got me thinking, do you consider that uh, written RPGs through posts uh, a way to play solo RPGs? Because normally when you play, uh, as, long, uh, as far as I know, uh, you don't have a G uh, GM. Um, you play on your own time and then you post and then another player plays in their own time. So there is no uh, live experience, so to say. So would you say that is a way to play solo RPG only with more people? Well, I... I don't have a lot of experience with that, but uh, I I did that without GM because most of the time when we play uh, when we play you know uh, play by post game it's very uh, improvised game we don't even need to talk about it before we just play hey you are in a in a forest there's a wolf what do you do you know you don't even need a GM or whatever but uh, I know people who actually play a campaign uh, on Discord, and there are GMs, actually. So there's one GM who, who plays, uh, you know, the NPCs and who tells a story, and I think they created a scenario, so they actually follow an actual scenario, even if it's uh, play by post. And it depends, you know, but as what we, what we do with one character and uh, several players this is not exactly solo rpg because you're still sharing the adventure with more people so i don't think it's solo rpg technically it depends on if it's um it can be if there's no gm it's a, it's like a gm list game actually well to me what do you think about it I'm I'm actually not sure <laughs> because uh, to me it has that kind of flavor of um, uh, playing alone, but at the same time it has the uh, the social part when the rest of the players uh, share your story with you. So I'm not sure what would be my answer to be honest. This is why I, I cheat and I call this solo multiplayer game when we do this on Discord, because we're using a solo role-playing game, but we are playing with more people, and most of the time we play the same character, so it's it's a bit blur, you know. But it's a way to, uh, to play solo, to show how to play solo also. It's a way to introduce people to solo RPG, because uh, some of them are new to this and they wanted to to try you know and playing solo but with with the, uh, other players it's it's fun also and you can play solo and play uh, several characters this is uh, not something that you see often but if you really like um, you know like the D, &D uh, basic you know party and there's a uh, not just one player, you can actually, there are some games where you play solo, but you play different characters, like uh, Four Against Darkness, I think, this one. So it's a solo game, but you have a, you know, a bunch of characters you have to manage. I've never played it, so I'm not going to tell you how, how what it looks like, but um, yeah, it, you can also do the, <laughs> the contrary, you, you're alone, but you play several characters. Why not? I should try that. When I play solo for Iron Swan, I have my character, but uh, most of the time I have an NPC that follows me everywhere because it's a uh, it's also a way to you know create um, the story and have dialogues because it also helps 
you think about what's going to happen, you can do that just to know to, to uh, find inspiration to what's going to happen. You can share your feelings with your fellow um, NPC. Uh. I assume you uh, changed the rules uh, to avoid an insta kill since you're playing with one character and normally uh, a single hit would be massive to, to one character. Do you change the rules? I read the other day about uh, people who... I might draw that impact. People who just uh, say, well, uh, I'll ignore the, the damage and I, I'll just uh, say it's a minus one or a minus two or whatever. You're asking if you're cheating while playing solo, right? <laughs> It's no, a question it's... that we, we ask a lot, actually. It's, yeah, it's kind of like, are you cheating? It's just like game books. Do you follow everything or do you skip when you don't want to die? Uh, okay, anyway, you continue I mean, to play. If you have a, a dragon against a single character, a, a hit would uh, kill them. It's just uh, that. Yeah, I, I never cheat. Actually, yeah. okay. I, I never changed the, the rules because, uh, but it's it's just like in multiplayer RPG when you don't want to roll the dice when you don't have to, you just don't roll because if you do this and you're not happy with the the issue of the roll, well, why do you roll the dice? You know. So if you're um, if you're ready to accept the mechanics of the game, you don't have to change it. I mean, it's most of the time the game is balanced. So if you change things, you'll need to decide. Okay, um, I don't want this my character to die right now. So yeah, why not? You can do that if you want to. Actually, my most of my characters, my first character I created in Iron Sworn died pretty quickly. But it's just because I didn't really know how to play the game. Because if you skip the uh, example. Uh, the end of the book and um, the every information that you need to actually know how to play the game. If you skip that, well, you're going to add too many enemies or, you know, um, too many dangers. And this is how you kill your character pretty quickly. So you also have to learn if you're improvising your adventure, you have to learn how many uh, danger you want to put in front of your character if you don't want to kill him too fast because it, it's a game that is uh, it's dark fantasy iron sworn so uh yeah you you have to be ready to uh, for your character to die pretty quickly if you if you start you know um combat and you're not ready or you don't have support well it's something that can happen because your character is just a human so yeah, it, but I think I'm, thanks to Iron Sworn, actually, um, I accept that my character can die and I accept the bad things that can happen because it's also the story, you know? Failing a, a role, it's not actually failing. It's a way to learn, to tell the story. Uh, it's very dramatic, it's very dark story, but it's still. So yeah, personally, I don't change the rules just because uh, it's not that interesting, and because it's a PBTA game. Also, if you have, uh, if you are used to these kind of games, uh, it's not failing. It's uh, each time you roll dice, it will decide if it's a great success, if it's not exactly a success, or if well, you th something went really wrong for you. So it's not. I don't I don't see the point of changing this. But about changing the rules, um, I don't do that because I'm not a game designer, but I see a lot of people who play solo that change everything. Like they use one tool, then they use a, a part of this mechanics from this game and the mechanics from this other game, and they 
you know, they mix everything to make their own way to play. And I don't want to do this because, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know a lot of, you know, game designing and I don't want to create something that is unbalanced. But you can actually do that if you want to pick a few mechanics from different games, put it together and play as you want, you can. But I like games that are, you know, that contains everything you need. It's, it's enough for me. Well, there's a lot on only two. Like free yeah. on, on if you're checking uh, if you're checking HIO it's a website you can find a lot of games. There are too many solo actually you can you know find games with the tags. So if you add solo, there's a lot of things. There's too much thing. Yeah. And most of them are free because uh, well, just like us and Inc, some of them are um, indie games or you know some of them are for gems if you don't know gems it's um, a challenge where you are supposed to create games or it can be create scenarios uh, whatever and this is how you <laughs> you create a lot of games like mostly one page solo rpg you can find a lot of this i think i'll play with my own games just to, to test them and to say hey I don't need anything anything else but, but my my own things hey <laughs> see well there's plenty 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 of things yeah and it, it can be difficult to find one game that you want to try because there's a lot of resources online but you know, with only the few ones that I I shared and that we shared here, you know, just to try it's enough. And then if you're interested in in this, you can find more. But um, yeah, about online resources and websites uh, and apps, actually, for Iron Sworn, there's one that is pretty cool that is Iron Journal. Uh, so it's created by a, a fan, actually. It's uh, someone who really enjoyed the game and they created their own app. It's uh, use, You can use it on your mobile. It's pretty cool. You have everything. You have even the the, the mechanics. There are, You can roll the dice in it. You can create your map. And there's the other version for the uh, sci-fi version of Iron Swan, which is Iron Swan Starforged. So the app is Stargazer, and it's the same. You have everything you need in it. You can create your character. You can uh, even write your own journal. You can create your map, etc. So it's pretty cool. Uh, there is also um, well, actually you can use World Twenty or Foundry or any other um, virtual tabletop. If you want to play solo, it helps you. You know, you can put any information you want to keep, like maybe your character sheet, your the NPCs, the, the map, or even tokens. So you can use any yeah, virtual tabletop. There is even one tabletop that is dedicated to solo RPG, which is called Random Solo. I never tried this one, but uh, it exists. It's pretty simple. You know, you what have- What is, is it simple. an app? Oh, about it. There's uh, another app in in Spanish too, which uh, which is uh, for a, a computer, which is called uh, Motor para Uno. I tried it, but uh, I find I found some some bugs, so I have to still um, try it uh, more. Because you can edit your own table spot. Um, my changes weren't uh, recorded, so I don't know. Oh, I know that the the ogre. I I tried the the demo, but I don't know. It's it's. Not I never mine. tried it, but uh, the ogre is a. Uh... Well, it's a very powerful tool. There is everything you need in it. It kind of looks like a, 
a video game kind of because you have your character you can have images you know um you it's have a map you can have design for for either one so you might want to to try it there's a, yeah. a demo too it was designed for everyone's one but maybe you can use it for different things you know why not uh but yeah for me it's it's a bit too much because I like when I play solo. Uh, I like to play with a pen, with a pencil, and a you know a sheet of paper, and 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 my dice, and my dice tray. And I I don't want to use um, I don't want to be in front of a screen because I do this all the time. You know what I mean? Like where yeah. every time on Discord and on screens, you know, watching videos and stuff. So when I play solo, I just want to play. You know, analogic with my pen, with my notebook, and any printed uh, document I need, and that's it. You know, cards and dice. I might try that as well. Maybe just to use the the computer to to um, uh, put uh, some music. Th this one, the last one, is is really like a video game. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, yeah. the frontier between this and I'm playing uh, a video game. It's a bit blurry. Yeah, it's not animated, so people just don't imagine it like a, a virtual tabletop where you have the the token instead of in three D. It's not exactly like that. It's two D, but um, yeah, you can have small tokens that are images, just like Room Twenty on Room Twenty, for example. Uh, but yeah. It, takes a lot of time to do this, so I don't know if I want to do this also. When I have to do this for virtual uh, role-playing games with other people, it takes me so many times, so much time, so I don't want to do this when I play solo. Um, I'm going to talk about an, a different subject, but it's still related to solo, uh, because there's... Uh, Someone who created a tool that you can use when you play solo because, you know, when you play with other people, you, most of the time, you decide what you don't want to talk about in the game and you have, uh, you know, safety tools like X card, etc. And you can actually use it when you're, when you're playing solo. So oh. there's this uh, document created by Axolotl. You can find on HIO. It's it's free. It's called I excard it myself, and it's <laughs> it's actually um, a safety tool that you can use uh, when you play, uh, because you know it's it may it may sound weird just to say hey why would I excard me like so the excard is a way to say hey stop I don't want this uh, topic in my game or there's something that I that doesn't make me feel comfortable, so I don't want to continue in this direction. So imagine you're, I don't know, you, you hate spiders. I don't know why, but yeah, just imagine. And there's another player that, or the GM that says, hey, there's a giant spider you are going to, to fight. And someone used the X card. So you say, okay, no spiders. We can change it into a different monster or anything. So it just it's the same thing when you play solo you sometimes it can happen that you you just uh, you know imagine your story and sometimes you don't know what's going to happen and I had some uh, I remember some people who uh, talked about this and they were surprised that they created a story that was way too dark for them and it it, it can happen sometimes you. Just remember, uh, you know, bad memories or something when you play solo. So this is a way to to maybe make your game more safe. I mean, if you're playing a really um, cozy game, it's most of the time it's not useful. But you know, before you play, you can decide I'm not going to talk about this or that because I don't want to feel bad and. I think playing solo can also make you feel really uncom uncomfortable if you're uh, starting to play with, you know, subjects that you maybe do not explore with other people when you play with other players. 
when you're solo, you can play and uh, tell stories about things that you don't want to talk about with other people. So it's introspection. It's it can be horror games. It can be really intimate subjects. So yeah, you can try this solo, but you still have this tool, and you still have to keep your game. Um, yeah, it has to be safe for you. Okay. Um, so I don't know if uh, we have more questions or more topics that uh, we want to address. I, I think that uh, since we have some uh, some members of the community that actually write uh, solo RPGs, maybe you can tell us a bit about your own RPGs. Me, I'm more of a... Well, I have certain topics that I really like. Most of which turn around urban fantasy. And a lot of the solo RPG I write or that I want to write are more like uh, daydreaming or finding the fantasy in the familiar, in the, every, in the everyday life. For example, my main game, Home Smaller Home, is a solo RPG where you play yourself in your own house or apartment, but you are re you are mm, reduced to the size of a pawn, to the size of the token. And in this game, you you wander around the house with your token. And you try exploring the, all the little uh, thing in your house to see uh, to see it all from an other point of view. And I really want to try this one because I read it, but <laughs> never take time to to actually play it. But it's it sounds fun. It's just like you use a you know a little character and you put it in your house and you imagine the the adventure. It's uh, it's one of my. Uh, I really like uh, playing little characters in a world that is too big for them. And indeed, and you are not alone in your house. There, are, in my game, there is magic. Mainly, uh, all the. Uh, all the figurines you have, all the insect there is, are alive and can talk to you. So suddenly there's a fly coming near you. It's part of the game. I had a comment from one of the players where his dog was uh, looking at him and was coming. So it became part of the game. I really want to play also games that you just can play outside, outside, sort of lap. Uh, one of the games I want to rework is a game that you can play when you are on a hike. And this is not something you see a lot in role-playing games. You usually play uh, inside and playing outside is, yeah, pretty cool, uh, different different way to play RPG, but outdoor, I mean, there's something, yes. there's a world outside. Sometimes, I mean, uh, sometimes it's just, just damn it, I'm bored. Well, I want to play a game. So that was the idea. So, okay, I will, I will create this game. So I'm not bored anymore. <laughs> it's uh, the same principle for my game. Uh, I have a game you play when you are stuck in a queue in a team park because I was uh, alone in the park and I really uh, and pff, waiting is sometimes is too long so really a game you can play it doesn't exist I want to create it <laughs> it's pretty cool that one I read it yes <laughs> It's really this sort of, and I admit there's also the 
so called Graal that you want to create something truly original so I try to create original things but sometimes just yeah you can have fun any way you want it's really hard to be original when you create something but this game is original if you want to check it on itch.io home small home Harris, maybe you want to share us some of your creations? I think you know uh, about them, but if you want, <laughs> this year I made uh, way too many things. But Is there I like... something related to solo RPG, maybe? Mm. Or not at all? All my games could be played solo, I guess, but I I also did a game which is a, an expansion to my own D&D game like D&D like game which uh, is an expansion of uh, another system to create spells and abilities and it's an entire uh, spellbook which uh, details like um, the the knowledge of a, a wizard and the 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 forces about uh, creating your own spells and even if you want your own writing systems. It's in Spanish uh, only. I might translate it someday, but I don't know. I really like it. It's called Liber Mirabilium. But I think I love Pocket RPG the most. Absin, you had a question? Not really a question, but an observation. This is what I like about the independent scene in uh, role-playing games. You get out of the confine of traditional RPG like D&D and you have a game that is just about creating spell. You have a game that is just about uh, creating strange creatures, creating a world and that's, and that's the same things. And you see a lot of them in a solo RPG where it's not you leave this big adventure and just you, you are a witch. And you are just trying, and you are just creating a potion. You are just uh, finding the part of your potion. You are just creating your spell book. Yeah, and um, and you could also use that uh, later in in a game. I can't remember now, but I read about um, a game which lets you create another thing that you can then use in another game so you're creating a physical object you can then use as a prop can't remember what it was all about malditos or no no because uh, uh, that's uh, another one of these uh, uh, game to create magical objects uh, and it encourages you to ones that you've created it to use it in other adventures, of course. Is it a physical object or it's only something you write to use in a different game? It's something you write. The, the creation itself is the game, but uh, it says why, why not uh, use it in once you have uh, created that object uh, in, in another campaign uh, solo or with more people. I'm going to share another game which can be played solo. Uh, it's not mine, but I love it. And it's a game about creating an entire world map and its history, DDs, and everything. And I love it. We didn't talk about Keepsake games, what's that? Yeah, because okay. you're talking about creating spells and objects, and actually you can there's there are games where you create actual objects. Like oh. um, 
you know this one that i posted it's um amending you actually have to create an, a real object i would actually do that if i knew how to to sue but yeah you actually this one you sue your own map there are it's drawings awesome. and you follow the map but to you know so you have to to change the thread like a lot of times, yeah. Yeah, but you don't have to know actually, uh, Sue, because you don't have to create a beautiful, perfect object. And you can do this with, uh, well, I mean, I don't know a lot of keepsake games, but you can create like uh, a bottle and put some little items in it or you can imagine creating i don't know uh, even a, a drawing can be uh, an object actually so i really like like just like arsen uh, reminds you that you can play outside or in your house this is a way to reconnect yourself to objects you know you're solo role playing but it's not only in your mind it's the real world around you so it's a different this. way and i really like this are there more games like this? I mean, something easier? Yeah, sure. It's the keepsake games. You can find no. plenty of them. But I mean, easier like uh, something that is, I don't know, baking, um, cooking, drawing, something less um, elaborate. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's already a game where you have to cook something. This I'm sure it exists. I, I know I, it. I know it because I saw it. I don't remember the name, but I, know I it love exists. this. Yeah, the the problem with cooking it was just an example. It's like I do would, uh, I wouldn't want to to eat. Mm. Oh yes, I don't know. Well, um. It's been a, a wonderful uh, chat, guys. I um, I'll take my leave. I'm a bit uh, tired, so it's been a pleasure. And we should definitely uh, make more make more of this because it's really interesting. Thank you a lot, Mori. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, in fact, I don't know if uh, uh, if you want, since we have already been uh, about one hour and a half, uh, maybe we can wrap it up right now. Yeah, sure. Hmm. And as Eddie said, it was really interesting for me. A lot of information shared in here that uh, we can, uh, and I and I think that we just scratched only the surface. I'm sure that in the indie scene there are a lot of games that uh, are worth uh, investigating. So thanks <laughs> all of you, and thank uh, thanks Mori for conducting it. Thanks. Uh, Arsene and Anedis for sharing your your games, and um, I'll leave it to you the the uh, some closer uh, words. Well, thanks to every one of you. It was a pleasure, and um, yeah, if you want to check all the resources, we can uh, share them later somewhere on the internet. Um, and yeah, if you want to check all the creations by. Uh, People here, you can check on HIO. I also, I don't know if Jess or Supe, you have an HIO account, but uh, I also post some some of my creations sometimes. I don't create games, but I create adventures sometimes. So, and I translate people, other people games in French. So yeah, we, we, we can find a lot of resources on HIO. It's a good way to, you know, start with a solo RPG. You t just type solo RPG and just try one and you'll see if you like it. If you don't like it, it's it's fine. You can try another one or just say it's not for you, no problem. But if you have questions, you can come and ask us, no problem. So thanks to everyone. I hope we will um, do another event next. 
I don't know what the topic will be, but uh, I'm pretty sure it will be very interesting. Okay. Thank you all.